So a lot of people struggle with recursion and understanding what it is. So in this video, I'm going to explain and give an example with the Fibonacci sequence. You may be wondering, what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it's a sequence of numbers where you add the previous two numbers to get the new one. So it starts with one and one. So your third number is two, one plus one is two. Then your third, your fourth one is three, one plus two is three, then five, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, and so on. We're going to use recursion to do this as a classic example of how recursion works. This is not going to be the most efficient way, but it'll lay out the foundation for how recursion works. And later on, we may even be able to make it much more efficient using an, uh, not annotations, decorators in Python in a later video. So first we need to define our function. Def uh, fib will be our Fibonacci sequence function. And it's going to take a number n, which is the nth number in the sequence. A simple way to do this is, well, if we want the zeroth number in the Fibonacci sequence, we'll just say to return zero. So if n is equal to zero, return zero. Simple enough, right? Next, what we need to do is actually see, okay, what if it's one? The first one is one. So l if n equals one, return one. Now here is where recursion takes place. If it's not zero or one, we can't say for sure what it's going to be. I don't know what the eighth one is off the top of my head, but we can calculate it by finding the previous numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So else return the previous Fibonacci number so the one right before this, plus two numbers before that. Now, if you remember, our sequence looks like this. If we were to say, okay, we want the first one, we get one. Second, we should get one. Third, we should get two, etc. So then if we say, okay, we want the fifth one, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to say, it's not equal to zero. It's not equal to one. So we're going to do this. And it's going to say, okay, so we wanted the fifth one, but we don't know that. So we're going to look at the one before this and the one before this twice. So two, and it's going to calculate each one of those. So then it's going to go three and say, okay, do we know what this is? No. So we're going to look at the one before it and the one before that. And then it's going to say, okay, so for this one, we return one. It's going to look up two and say, okay, then we'll do the same thing. Okay, we get that. Okay, return one. And eventually it will return one enough while adding these up to give us five. And we can prove this. So let's go down here and say print fib five. I'm going to save this and run. And you see, thankfully, we didn't screw up and we get five. So let's go back and discuss exactly how the recursion works. What, what makes recursion recursion? Now, there are many ways that we could do this, but the recursion piece of it comes here where we're calling the same function within itself so that we're going to repeatedly call a function as if we're looping through it until we get to the point where we know the value. So until it hits zero or until it hits one, it's going to continue to call this on each number. Then the very last one will return the value one. It'll add one plus the one before that, which is again one. And we made it so it will comp compute this because it'll know once one is equal to one to return one. So say, okay, one is one, one is one. It'll add that together, you'll get two. And then it'll say, okay, so once now we have two, what was the three one? It'll add it up again and it'll be like, okay, so we know the value for this one's two. We know the value for this one's one. So we get three. It'll add those together. Once it knows the Fibonacci uh, n minus one and n minus two, which in this case would be four and three, which are three and two respectively. Add those together and return five. That's what makes this recursion. There's a lot of other ways we can do this. In fact, there's actually a way we can do this by using just purely square roots, no looping or recursion behavior at all. That's much more efficient, but recursion, as you can see, has its use. It's very simple. 
And you may be wondering, well, this doesn't really look that simple. Here's how you would do the Fibonacci sequence in the more simple way, the way that doesn't require looping. You'd say def, we'll do capital Fib, and, and then we return this, the square root, 1 plus the square root to the power of the nth number of the sequence minus the 1 minus the square root of 5 to the power of the nth uh, digit in the sequence divided by all of this divide or yeah divided by 2 to the power of n times the square root of 5 and you, you can see that's that's complicated and no one's going to see this and be like, ah, I, I understand what's going on. So recursion allows us to loop through a function within itself so that we can use it to reliably get the same values and makes it readable for humans. Th this is very explanatory of how it works as compared to this. Like, why is square root 5 involved in this? Well, because of like mathematicians that know enough about sequences to really give you a formula for it. So... How else can we simplify this? Stay tuned for the next time when we talk about decorators, and I'll show you how we can actually modify functions at runtime. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you understand how recursion works. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below, and if you'd like to see future videos, click that subscribe button. Thank you.